Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful, soon to be 83 degree December day here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the oasis of freedom on this spectacularly gorgeous Friday, December 17th. 2021. I guess we're even going to be warmer tomorrow. So, uh, <clears throat> since it is Friday, it's a little bit breezy. Uh, I hope this wind doesn't, uh, oh well, I'm going to stick it out outside because it's too beautiful to go inside. Uh, since it is Friday, time to do what I do every Friday, and that is to bring you my least viewed video of the week <clears throat> which of course would be my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I head over to mongabay.com and check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what is on their minds while the rest of the planet is in the grips of the Omicron panic so while the entire news and the planet is locked down in fear over the Omicron panic, <clears throat> let's see if we can, uh, let's see if at least Rhett Butler can get through uh, one roundup of assaults against our collapsing planet, the uh, obliteration of our fellow earthlings off the face of the earth, etc without mentioning the O word, but uh, <clears throat> I need to put this little dog down for him to go get a squirrely or whatever he's got on his mind. So we're going to start out, I believe, in sub-Saharan Africa today. Uh, we're going to go down to Madagascar. Manga Bay is actually a, uh, a bay in Madagascar. We're going to be going over to another wetland other than Manga Bay. <clears throat> Madagascar Gemstone Rush puts a wetland and its community under pressure. The discovery of gemstones near Madagascar's largest wetland has fueled a mining boom that threatens the environment and the local community. Yes, the rural community of Andiana Avarata has seen its population nearly double as miners flock there from across Madagascar in search of, you know, all these little rocks. The mining activity, none of it permitted has scarred a hill and threatens to wash large volumes of sediment into Lake Alatora. Yes, which is home to unique and endangered species. The miners' presence has also led to a surge in crime and sexually transmitted diseases, with the local community seeing little in the way of benefit from the mining boom. And there you go. That's a classic story. That 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 is the poster child Manga Bay <clears throat> story. You can take this story, you can multiply it all over the planet. Okay, as long as we are in uh, <clears throat> sub-Saharan Africa, this is the third week Manga Bay has been covering this story. I actually saw this story covered in the Washington Post yesterday, looking at the future of the Congo Basin peatlands. <clears throat> we mentioned last week that they have found these uh, peatlands which have now been identified as the largest and most intact peatlands in the world's tropics. Uh, and we are waiting for the mining boom 
to begin. Um, anyway, <clears throat> researchers say investing in and <clears throat> investing in studying and protecting the peatlands will benefit the global community as well as people living in the region because <clears throat> the area holds a vast repository of carbon. Yes. Um, the peat line, the peatlands <clears throat> are threatened from logging, agriculture, and extractive industries which could cause their rapid degradation. Uh, just this year, the government announced that it was planning to end a moratorium on the issuance of logging concessions. The move raised concern among conservation groups who say the moratorium should remain in place to protect <clears throat> the DRC's portion of the world's second largest rainforest. Yes, timber concession boundaries overlap with the peatlands. Do you think so? Uh, you know, guys, come on, kiss goodbye the uh, Congolese peatlands. It, it is going to issue a uh, you know, not just the destruction of the ecosystem, but it is going to set loose another uh, carbon bomb. Uh, probably another methane bomb getting ready to blow on this planet in the middle of the Congo rainforest, which will not exist in 30 years. There will be no Congo rainforest in 30 years it will be a relic from the past all right uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm not gonna get into this whole thing of noble savages today uh, in, anyway uh, if you believe that noble savages are going to save the planet, there's probably nothing I can say to you to disabuse you of the myth of the noble savage. You know, uh, obviously, Rhett Butler, Derek Jensen, and uh, I think even uh, Michael Rupert were all uh, of the same stripe. I used to be a believer in the myth of the noble savage myself until I went down to uh, and, and spent several months in the Peruvian Amazon uh, getting a first-hand look at noble savages uh, in the Amazon rainforest uh, saving the planet and that's what it took for me so I assume if you're not willing to go down to the Peruvian Amazon with your own eyes looking at noble savages saving the planet you will just go along assuming that noble savages will save the planet but I'm going to move along. All right, we have a Manga Bay reporter, which I was when I was down there in the Peruvian Amazon. Uh, a Manga Bay reporter sued in what appears to be a pattern of legal intimidation by a Peruvian cacao company, meaning a chocolate growing uh, chocolate down there. A Peruvian cacao company that sued a Manga Bay writer for reporting on deforestation in the Amazon 
has also targeted others and what lawyers said appears to be a pattern of intimidation. Yes. Uh, anyway, I guess they've sued three Manga Bay reporters. Uh, uh, of course, you know, Rhett Butler. Uh, uh, you know, advise me. I had to get the hell out of uh, Salvacion, Salvation Peru. Uh, you know, I did a story about a uh, hunt oil company down there in Salvation Peru in the Mother of God River Basin. And uh, before my story came out in Manga Bay, Rhett Butler told me, uh, Sam, get the hell out of salvation. It wasn't legal. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't legal action. He was concerned about, he was concerned about me getting a bullet through my head. Okay. Let's see, what is this guy? Uh, Oh, this is an interview with Daniel Katz, a co-founder of the Rainforest Alliance. Um, since founding, uh, anyway, uh, you can go on. Manga Bay and find that interview. Uh, looks like a good one. I'll need to read it. Okay. I love it. So, you know, Manga Bay has their own YouTube channel. Uh, and Now, I have not seen this video where Rhett Butler is asking the question, why has illegal logging increased in the greater Mekong Delta, you know, so, uh, all right, the, the answer to why has logging, it, it doesn't make any difference, and Rhett Butler knows this, whether it's legal or illegal logging. Can, can we cut the crap uh, on legal versus illegal logging? All right, the reason why logging has increased in the greater Mekong Delta why logging has increased in the Amazon rainforest, why logging has increased in the Congo rainforest, why, lo why logging has increased in the Siberian, uh, I don't know if that's a rainforest. The reason that logging has increased is that there are more people on the planet, uh, A, needing wood. Every time a human being is born who might need a product from logging is born, you can expect logging to increase. Okay, that's answer number one. The second part of the answer, why has logging increased, is that more and more people, especially in Asia, especially in China, have more moolah, have more money to purchase more products that come from lumber. Well, lumber, paper, whatever. Uh, so we have more people with more money on the planet than we used to. The more people with the more money we have on the planet, the more trees will be logged. I am looking at a uh, at three buildings that I built out of logged cypress lumber here in Florida, where. Uh, these beautiful cypress trees were ripped out of a Florida swamp to provide lumber so I could buy the lumber 
and build these three buildings, which I need to tear down and move to New York? That is the answer to why has illegal logging increased in the greater Mekong. All right, uh, here's the latest Mennonite bashing. Across Latin America, Mennonites seek out isolation at the expense of forest. Uh, this is an example of planet nibbling. These Mennonites moving down to uh, all over Latin America and doing what humans do when they move into a place where there are forests. They cut the forest down, okay? It's like in, uh, in New York, I buy my lumber from the Amish who moved to New York to cut down the forest. All right, let's see, here is a, a headline starting off with the hilarious oxymoron Indonesian peat restoration. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you will not believe this. We're going to go to the Brazilian Amazon rainforest now where we find see this is why I, uh, I, I so look forward to this roundup every week because I never would have figured this out for myself without Rhett Butler's tireless tireless efforts <coughs> to uh, educate me uh, I would be a clueless moron completely unaware of this fact. Do you believe that exports of threatened species of timber boomed under Jair Bozo Nero? Yes. An investigation begun in May this year by Brazil's own federal police highlighted, quote, a major scheme facilitating the smuggling of rainforest products, close quote. Hmm. Between February of 2020 and May of 2021, close to 100,000 metric tons of wood was exported to the United States France, Japan, Germany, and Belgium. Yes, an eighth of which came from rainforest species considered threatened by the Brazilian Forestry Service. I don't know uh, why this study did not uh, include China. Um, these details have been unearthed in an unprecedented report by a Brazilian investigative journalism outlet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the fallout has already seen Brazil's environment minister resign and other officials in timber companies come under scrutiny. All right, here we go. France is getting tough on soy farmers chopping down the Brazilian Amazon. Yes, Brazilian soy is the single largest French import of deforestation contributing to the massive reduction. Oh, this is more the Cerrado grasslands. But uh, France is saying, clean up your act. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go over to Australia. Rhett doesn't talk much about Australia. 
So this is what are those noble savages in Australia doing to save the planet? First Nations unite to fight industrial exploitation of Australia's Martuwara. Yeah. Um, the Fitzroy River in the Kimberley region of Western Australia, one of the country's most ecologically and culturally significant waterways, is facing proposals of further agriculture and mining development, including irrigation and fracking. In response, First Nation communities which is, we probably now racistly call the Aborigines in the region have developed different methods to promote the conservation of the river. Yes. Um, the waterway is the last stronghold of the world's most evolutionarily distinct and globally endangered species, the freshwater sawfish. The freshwater sawfish, you can uh, kiss goodbye. Well, here's another story kind of going along with that Manga Bay reporter arrest. You will not believe this. <clears throat> In Latin America, the law is a tool to silence environmental defenders. Yeah, before a bullet is. Did you realize that environmental defenders across Latin America are being sued and arrested as they protest against agribusiness, mining, and energy projects on their land? Experts say that this criminalization serves one purpose, to demobilize defenders using fear, exhaustion, stigmatization, and even social and financial ruin. All right. Uh, let's go over to China, where we have this shocking headline. China's pivot from funding coal plants to funding gasification slammed as more of the same. China has promised to stop funding new coal-fired power plants abroad, but appears intent on investing in other coal projects, including coal gasification plants in Indonesia. Yes, <clears throat> one state-owned Chinese company announced in October that it would build a $560 million coal gasification plant in Indonesia turning coal into methanol. Yes, energy experts warn that this pivot away from coal-fired power plants to gasification plants, quote, may be a loophole in the commitment to ending coal financing, close quote. Yes. Indonesian President Joko Widodo has also promised billions of dollars of support for coal gasification while seeking foreign investment to expand the industry. Yeah, like seeking forest, foreign investment from China. All right. Uh, here is how saving wetlands can save the planet. 
from the vast frozen mires of the Arctic, you know, the former permafrost, now the temperfrost, to the peat swamps of Asia and now Africa, quote, all wetlands are under threat and we are losing them three times as fast as forest. This is an interview with James Madgwick, CEO of Wetlands International. Uh, peatlands are particularly uh, effective at storing carbon, but if drained or damaged, peat quickly turns from carbon sink to carbon source. Uh, let's see. Climate change agricultural impacts to heighten inequality. Major changes in crop productivity will be felt globally in the next 10 years, according to new computer simulations climate impacts on crops could emerge a decade sooner than previously expected in major breadbasket regions in North America, Europe, and Asia, according to the newest forecast. Yes. Uh... Anyway, uh, high and low emission scenarios project similar trends for the next 10 years, suggesting these agricultural impacts are locked in. Do you think so? Okay, once again asking the question, I think they, didn't they ask this question last week? Do carbon offset markets really work? Once again, if you missed it last week, the answer to the question, do carbon offset markets really work, is no, they do not. Here is another article on timber trafficking in the Mekong uh, here is how uh, Colombian women are banding get together to fight rampant mining in Colombia. Uh, anyway, guys. Uh, there is a whole lot here, but I understand I am talking to myself and the wind is coming up. Uh, so just a couple more headlines since I have to yell probably. Did you realize that illegal mangrove logging surges in Indonesia amid economic hardship. This is a 280% increase. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, here is thousands of trees burned and logged in Cambodia. Uh, You would not believe that in Laos, a very dangerous dam threatens an ancient world heritage site. The government of Laos plans to build this giant hydroelectric dam upstream from a UNESCO world heritage site. Uh, and then they're selling the, the uh, power to other countries. Yep, yep, yep. 
Speaking of hydropower, you know, hydropower being a, a major cornerstone of the UN's sustainability goals, huh, you will not believe that tigers and jaguars are under threat from tropical hydropower projects. A new study reveals that more than one-fifth of the world's tigers and one in 200 jaguars have been affected by habitat loss linked to hydropower projects. Yes. Uh, do you think so? Uh, let's see. Here they're asking the question, what do two giant land deals mean for the future of Southeast Asia's forest? I think uh, this is the answer from the forest. What two giant land deals mean for the future of Southeast Asia's forest? any other forest. Uh, <clears throat> here is UK conglomerate Hardeen's called red-handed clearing orangutan habit in Sumatra. A UK conglomerate is deforesting the only known habitat of the critically endangered Tapanuli orangutan, despite promising to stop doing so. Hmm. The latest satellite imagery shows it has been caught red-handed. Yes, said Mighty Earth, which also noted that customers of Astra International's palm oil subsidiary, including Unilever and Hershey's, were also calling for a group-wide no deforestation commitment. I think we all know about those deforestation commitments from Hershey's candy bars, etc. But anyway, I got to wrap this up because I am talking to myself. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day, and I need to continue practicing the art of scrounging for food left behind by a suicide. And I highly suggest you learn to develop the art of scrounging for food left behind by suicides. This is a skill that will serve you well in the coming years. Bye guys.